Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and this is CuttingThroughTheMatrix.com You can also find me on Alan Watt's SentientSentinel.eu for those in Europe. Today is the 22nd of June 2007. The world we live in is a world of mass deception. Generations go through their lives never knowing what's really going on. What they do find out are those things which impact them personally in their lifetimes. But they never know that their children's destinies have already been planned by think tanks as theirs in fact were planned by big think tanks before they were even born the world is a huge business plan that's been on the go for a long long time run by very powerful very wealthy people wealth is a con but as long as we believe in it then we go along with it We enable the beast to rule over us, you might say. People who think they're waking up generally, as I say, are responding to the first inklings that their life, that they're used to, their routine is being changed by outside forces or laws or whatever it may be, or the economy or wars, blah, blah, blah. On it goes, is incessant. There's never been a generation for a long, long time that's actually lived their life out in peace and free from worry of economic depression, collapse, or warfare. That's the techniques of control. Many of the shows I go on, it should be noted, have their own. They have their own particular formats. They cater to their market, as they say. The market being those people who buy the products that they advertise on the shows. The U.S. Patriot stations used to exclusively cater to Christian society. However you define that, because there are so many branches and divisions of Christianity, it's a a morass. Generally what they used to mean by it was a, a conservative group who were unchangeable in their outlooks and views in the world and in their own country and their way of life. Today, even amongst Christianity, they've absorbed so much of the New Age movement, which infiltrated them as early as the the 1800s, and started its slow, gradual process of bringing the, the, the new version of a mystical Christianity. Fundamentalism used to be conservative, now it's a type of charismatic movement where they go to feel good, like children go to their parents to feel good. If they feel insecure, they want to be protected. It's it's become a travesty of what it was supposed to be about, but it was lost a long time ago. Christianity has, like all movements that start with good intentions, it was taken over by the rich and powerful and used to brainwash the peoples who then forget or or confuse the message and the supposed tradition 
with warlike activities. It's much easier to control whole groups of people or whole nations through a religion, which can then be so easily used by the clever psychopath who gets in and points to those heathens or barbarians or whatever they want to be called over there. On professional, regular, city type of talk shows across the world, they have professional talking heads. An idea that was spawned a long time ago of a predictive programming where the, the talking head will come on and give you a subject with a, an emotion, emotive content to get you emotionally involved with always are you on this side or that side of the issue. And they do this every day across the world. They're also trained not to have dead air space, as they call it, which is a pause between what they're saying and what they're thinking to the next statement. That started off with the disc jockeys early on too, the professional blabbermouths. What it created was an, a surrealistic form of listening by the people who tuned in. And it's a technique that was first copied from religious uh, groups with particular, especially from the United States, particular styles of charismatic stage performances where they hype up an emotion amongst the crowd they talk very fast and what that hap- what does to a person really who, who's listening it overwhelms you trying to keep up with the barrage that comes out of their mouths until eventually you succumb you can't keep up and you sit back and then you're downloaded and that's the step towards conditioning which is a, one of the techniques of brainwashing so the professional talk show hosts on your regular FM across the world at the city, the big city radio stations use the same technique there's no entertainment out there that you can sit and listen to anymore and be safe because everything is to make you anxious, angry or whatever or apathetic even now some of the shows I go on you can tell they have particular viewpoints they have partic- they cater to a certain audience and if I'm on any show I go on any show but it doesn't mean that I necessarily agree with their format or their presentation or the direction they'd like to take me into I'm well aware that at the right time the public will be stirred up especially in the United States by someone who will start off the spark which causes the expected the expected and predicted reaction from government and that will happen and be presented to the public at the right time and not before everything works to the clockwork in this system you cannot change a system until you understand how you got to where you are you cannot change a system without questioning all systems in all times and all ages you must know what was before you can understand what is or what could be. Ultimately, the whole point of existence is not about creating mass movements. It's about changing yourself. 
It's the only material that you can be sure of changing. You can never be sure of anyone else. People fight over dialogue. They fight over egos. They fight because they've got fixed opinions. And they think that everyone else should have the same fixed opinion. As long as the people down below are arguing with themselves and being led by people who may be confused themselves, you you will always have the blind leading the blind. The elite are well aware of this because they have the histories of the ages. Histories have formats in them. Formats are techniques well understood that that which has happened before in society, if you know the right keys to press, the right format, the right sequence, can be reintroduced again in society at any time. The ancient Greek philosophers talked about it. It was well understood then, thousands of years ago. Like mathematical equations. Now I don't cater to or to any particular religious group. I don't live in a cave, Plato's cave. I've studied all religions. I know all the religions. I know the similarities of them all. I know the dissensions from them all to each other. I know how the histories are involved and how they've all been used to fight each other so that others, a very few, might profit. You cannot alter the course of a system unless you understand perfectly what has happened to make it into this system, where it came from. You must understand what life was like in the past. You must understand what people thought at different times in the past. And you must clarify in your own mind if you're simply trying to stop something so that things don't get any worse than what they are at the moment, that really is what most folk want. They want to stop time because really they're fairly content with the way things are as long as they don't get any worse. As long as the credit cards can still be used and you can still reward yourself for working at some job at the end of the month. Pavlovian training of rewards. The system punishes you if you don't. So it's reward and punishment. Is that what life is supposed to be all about? Those who can be cheery and happy and enthusiastic about changing the world really don't know, don't understand the world at all. In the Christian version of a saviour, The Saviour is always portrayed as coming as a man of sorrows. It's much, much deeper in Jewish tradition where the sacrificial lamb, in other words, the person who comes, who takes on the sins of the world, 
isn't just a man of sorrows, he's laden down with the burden of sorrows, even misshapen physically. That's how the allegory goes. What it means is that it's only when you reach the understanding of the world itself and the tragedy of it all, for the whole world, not just your little place, your little space in it, but the whole world and the horror that's been perpetrated across the planet, not just now, but in times gone by and in times to come. That's what it means. You've got to go through the sorrow first before you can see any light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know personally how anyone can sit happily back and go through all the same old routines of saving this and saving that or saving this country or that country or this system or that system and probably watch television once in a while and really laugh and so on and forget that there are people across the world in the system because of this system who are being killed every day it's easier of course when they've been maligned by the media which is the job of the media it's just an extension of government you malign, you dehumanize an enemy to make it more palatable that you're going over there to kill them there's men, women and children across the planet being killed in the name of freedom there's your double speak for you we're still we breed the ones that go off and do it we've watched them being raised on video games games designed initially to train the military to kill psychologically designed games to get rid of the emotional contact with a potential target to dehumanize it into a thing, an object that's what these games were designed for and I knew years ago when the games first came in after being used by the military and developed for the military as early as World War II that they're, they're going to raise a whole generation up to be part of a military for the big push the big push for the world and that has happened I can remember watching a US warship uh, an aircraft carrier I should say bringing marines and aircraft over to the Middle East before the invasion of Iraq it showed troops on the deck enjoying the sun and dancing to rap music which was blaring over the tannoy system and had their shirts off and they all had their crew cuts the crew cut by the way goes back to the days of Rome the Roman mercenary was given the first crew cut it's interesting too to see that the US Constitution they even said when they made it up they'd base it in on that of Rome which was an empire builder it's also the reason why your president can become a dictator because they copied the laws of Rome but on this this troop ship these guys were dancing to their rap and doing all this strange stuff this awful sound and I thought to myself we've trained these people with over 25 years of video games in the most debased educational system there's been for a long time in a destroyed society where most of them didn't have parents they have single mums the state has become their boss we were sending over the barbarians to one of the oldest cultures 
in the world to demolish it. I'm sure there's lots who don't want to hear that, but that's the facts, that's the truth. And personally, there's not a day that goes by that it, it doesn't pop into my head of what is going on over there. A long laid plan written and published in the 1990s by the Project for a New American Century, the group with Wolfowitz and the Cheneys and all the rest of them, laying out their plan to take over Afghanistan, Iraq, to be followed by Iran, then Syria. That was their format. And lo and behold, their Pearl Harbor event occurred, and they got their wish. Just like that. What luck. Took years of planning for it all to go. It wasn't a war in Iraq. It was a walkthrough in reality against all the massive military equipment that went in. They were well aware that the problems would come afterwards with guerrilla-type warfare. All of that was discussed back in the 70s and 80s when they talked about the fallout after the Cold War would be over of all the groups which the CIA had started up to create nationalistic movements within those countries. So they use everyone in turn to create nationalism to fight the Soviet. Once the, the purpose is over, they go off and kill off the nationals and claim that they're terrorists. Everyone gets used in turn. Everyone. You see Africa, which is decimated to do in a good part because of the AIDS epidemic that swept through. There's also tremendous famines in some parts, always ongoing, because Africa was scheduled for a big part of the depopulation program. And lo and behold, it's happening. And it's an odd thing to watch people die of starvation in some of these villages because there's no protest, there's a complete acceptance at a certain stage and you walk into a village and see people laying around all over the place some dead, some dying no mourning and this is the 21st century although we've been around an off and off an awful lot longer than that What are we trying to keep here? What are we trying to keep as a system? Are we trying to keep that which is familiar to us in our lifetime? Because if we are, it's a, a lost cause. It wasn't our system. This is what we're used to. What are you, what are you used to now? is not what they were used to 50 years ago or 100 years ago or 200 years ago as a system the paradox is you have a mirror image of a reality or a truth being abused by the tyrants this old story of the opposites you want to call it a, a god and a devil or the, a, 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 the yin and the yang whatever you want to call it it's the same old story the one is real one isn't the, the 
this is the only way that this world is going to come out of this with any semblance of sentient thought for all or most of the population. We know the elite are going to chip everyone eventually, a chip that will interface with your nervous system, where they say themselves from their meetings at Loyola University, the World Science Meeting, that once these are installed, it will be impossible for an individual to even think of themselves as an individual. That will be gone. No ability to even do so. It will be the collective we. That is what one of these mirror images has planned. The interfacing with supercomputers which will interpret thoughts. You'll pick up your wrong think and send back signals to your mind to make sure that you're on the right think path. You will have no decisions to make on anything. Your opinions will be given to you just a step beyond what we have today through mass media propaganda. A better, more sophisticated form of slavery as Charles Galton Darwin called it in his book The Next Million Years. The mirror of that one is paradoxically something which has some similarities except it retains the right of individual thought because the war has always been how people can handle being an individual can they handle being an individual the United Nations declared war on the individual blaming that for all of the world's problems in the past the United Nations is only a front group for the world's wealthiest power groups to get their way because the wealthiest power groups came to these conclusions a long time ago they stated that if they had a world of individual thought there would be chaos most people today cannot handle being an individual that's why they get up in the morning with music or radio blaring they drive to work with it blaring they drive through noise blaring crowds, cities they hear noise all day at work or chatter they drive home with noise and music or talk shows or whatever and they get home and they watch television or play on the computer their head their heads are already full of other people's information and chatter they'd be terrified if they had to spend a week or even a day in silence with their own thoughts that'd be a unique experience so most people have given up the right to think for themselves already without knowing it the problem with many people including those on talk shows they cater to the patriot side of things they have little bits of quotes but they've never really read the books or they'll spin into their own perceptions what they want it to mean Uh, that's why quotes are no use unless you read all of the books The people don't understand the past at all and how the greatest problems that haven't been discussed recently were discussed long ago 
and hammer doubts amongst people as they did debate the meaning of individual life and the rights of individual life which could only exist with respect for other people's rights and differences for those who keep talking about rights, rights, rights they can be the biggest tyrants if they've ever gotten into a position of power because they'd make everyone else the same they couldn't tolerate differences and I always think what a boring world this would be to travel across the whole world just to see young guys with baggy pants with their hats on backwards dancing to the same noise or young girls dressing like the characters they see on their TV dramas of school like the grassy high dressed like little whores how did this happen? well it happened because the Council on Foreign Relations which is the American branch one branch actually there are other Council on Foreign Relations for other non-Commonwealth countries had a huge meeting in London in the 60s with the Royal Institute of International Affairs, their parent organization, to decide who would give the world its upcoming culture for the new world order. And they decided to give it to Hollywood and basically what became much music. The entertainment industry would be based in the United States and that was the culture they were going to promote. They've been very successful. And this was done on purpose to try and destroy other cultures, to create a unified culture, a new culture, where the world state, through UNESCO, would handle national education associations under the umbrella of the International Education Association of UNESCO. Let's grab a book off the shelf, actually, to give a little quote or something. I think it's on 275, a page. Yeah, it is. Of Jefferson's Letters. A guy who was definitely well-versed in all of the subjects which I'm talking about to do with what life is. This is a letter he wrote to F.A. van der Kemp on March 22nd, 1812. He says, The only orthodox object of the institution of government is to secure the greatest degree of happiness possible to the general mass of those associated under it. The events which this work proposes to embrace will establish the fact that unless the mass retains sufficient control over those entrusted with the powers of their government and these will be perverted to their own oppression in other words if you don't watch over them they will use the system of control to oppress you and to the perpetuation of wealth and power in individuals and their families selected for the trust. The trust is the government we're talking about. Individuals would get in like hereditary dynasties, accumulate the wealth, take more power, and they'll take over the system. He goes on to say, whether our constitution has hit on the exact degree of control necessary is yet under experiment and it is a most encouraging reflection that distance and other difficulties securing us against the brigand governments of Europe in the safe enjoyment of our farms and firesides the experiment stands a better chance of being satisfactorily made here than on any occasion yet presented by history now when he spoke 
he spoke in a time when people, the majority lived in the countryside on farms, as they did up until the Great Depression, especially in the US and Canada, but 90% of the populace lived out in the country. They were self-sufficient pretty well. The Great Depression, after it was over, you ended up having it reversed. Completely, the figures were totally reversed. The people had been driven into the cities. They'd lost their farms. The bankers had taken over. And those big families that he warned you against would take over. Government had already done so. They discussed this kind of possibility too. And you'll find them in his letters and the letters of other founding fathers. So the great dream was over a long time ago. It stays a dream. A dream is not a reality. On page 287, Jefferson wrote to, to John W. Epps, E-P-P-E-S, June 24th, 1813. The letter was titled Duration of Debt. He said, It's a wise rule and should be fundamental in a government disposed to cherish its credit and at the same time to restrain the use of it within the limits of its faculties, never to borrow a dollar without laying a tax in the same instant for paying the interest annually and the principal within a given term and to consider that tax is pledged to the creditors on the public faith. On such a pledge as this, sacredly observed, a government may always command, on a reasonable interest, all the lendable money of their citizens, while the necessity of an equivalent tax is a salutary warning to them and their constituents against oppressions, bankruptcy, and its inevitable consequence, which is revolution." But the term of redemption must be moderate and at any rate within the limits of their rightful powers. But to what limits, it will be asked, does this prescribe to their powers? What is to hinder them from creating a perpetual debt? The laws of nature, I answer. Now listen to this part. This is the sort of thing they discussed back then, not just in the United States. He said, the earth belongs to the living, not to the dead. We may consider each generation as a distinct nation with a right by the will of its majority to bind themselves but none to bind the succeeding generation more than inhabitants of another country. What he's telling you is you, a previous generation cannot put debt on a future generation to pay off And he goes on to tell you later on in the letter that if they do, then that generation is in fact a slave, born into slavery, to pay it off. He says at the end of this letter, it is at the same time a salutary curb on the spirit of war and indebtment, which is the modern theory of the perpetuation of debt has drenched the earth with blood and crushed its inhabitants under burdens ever accumulating. It was well understood all that time ago. All of the the techniques that the elite had used in Europe if brought to the United States, it would make a worse beast out of the United States because the U.S., was bigger. It was planned to be huge, have a huge population, had masses of natural resources to use. They all knew that it would end up being a tremendous war machine for the evil characters who'd already rampaged Europe with war after war after war. Now the U.S. officially has taken over as the policeman of the world 
which was discussed in the early 1900s by the Royal Institute of International Affairs. They knew after World War I they'd have to start gradually putting power over to the United States to take over its role as a policeman of the world. Uh, lots have been lots have been published from the top on this. There's nothing secret about it. And at the Council on Foreign Relations meeting, or the Royal Institute's meeting, same thing. In the 30s, 1937, 38, they discussed China to be built up, and it would take over as the policeman from the United States, because they understood that the U.S. would exhaust itself financially and eventually succumb and go under and therefore the up and rising country which they planned to bring into being which they did, they financed modern China into being it didn't do it itself it will become the policeman of the world it's already been mentioned that China is the model state for the world by the United Nations because it has a disciplined, obedient population Jefferson and others talked about a third party which was a dangerous party if it ever took hold it was almost invisible because really it was more of a mentality than a party he didn't have the term psychopath at the time but he mentioned those such as Hamilton Hamilton came to see him And Jefferson had drawings up or portraits up of his favourite teachers in history. Hamilton was completely ignorant of who they were. So Jefferson explained them to him. And Hamilton thought nothing of it and said, Well, mine are the Caesars and Nero. In other words, he was telling Jefferson that power those have the right to have to power over an enlightened, fearful mass were his heroes. Uh, that was the ones, those were the ones that have come into play. These are the dynasties you now have that already existed from Europe through thousands of years of interbreeding. War isn't simply killing people with physical direct means. War is total war. Tor- war is to do with the breakup of family, a breakup of person to person contact, trust, divide and conquer. War is every covert means to destroy the mind, to create apathy, to create defeatism. But it's also used in a new age way to make them all happy and look towards the positive, yet keep them in ignorant ignorance of how bad things really are. In ancient times they understood this technique. And in the Middle East they said you had to die to the world before you could live. And what they meant by that was you died to everything that made you fearful, everything that you we're afraid of losing because eventually you get to a stage where you realize there's nothing left to lose and that when you really realize that was a moment where peace came upon you then you rebuilt your life with completely different values that's happened in every creed and culture in history to individuals in all times and ages Lenin himself said there are many, many ways, thousands of ways and directions in which society could go. But he was also well aware that they couldn't tell the public that because the public that he wanted to arise and be controlled would be a public like any other public who are left in the dark. They'd think that the one they were born into, the system was natural simply because it existed 
all children think it's natural. The system they're born into is the only ultimate way it could possibly be. It doesn't dawn on them there could be thousands of other directions, other other ways of living. It never dawns on them. And if their parents don't know, then most of the battle is already won for those who designed the system. The, the parents can't tell the children or warn them. But the selfishness and greed and division that's been deliberately fostered through education and through the special funding by the big think tanks and foundations and the CIA and MI6 working together to create the new cultures have divided, has divided society, uh, man to wife, person to person, parents to children, because now the state is the supreme boss directly to each individual and there's no one, there's no cohesiveness amongst a group or a family left to stand up together and say no that was deliberate and it was talked about and written about by many authors in the past including H.G. Wells who was a propagandist for the the British Crown in his non-fictional works By past experience, I have noticed that those who want to be cheerleaders for the good side of things, the happy side of things, really are telling you a statement. They're making a statement that they don't want to look at all the bad because really they can't handle it. Yet we must look at it all to understand it. To get out of a situation, you must understand how you got into a situation. We have been under attack, under a war process before birth. Now the eugenicists in society, and it's the same bunch at the top who believe in good breeding and better genes with their lists of inferior types to be eliminated in future societies. Now they want to go into the womb itself and they also want the right, ultimately, to decide who can breed and who cannot. Lots have been published from the early 20th century onwards on this very thing by the Genesis Societies. Now we have bioethics committees. It's the same bunch They just appeared out of nowhere with government backing and they're meant to do our thinking for us. That's really what they're there for. A placebo so that we won't be involved in any decision-making at all. These groups are just suddenly there, you see. But they are eugenicists and they believe that anything with inferior genes are somehow a blot upon the process of what they call evolution, uh, a theory which is a god or a religion they really do believe in. At least it validates them in their own conscience, if they have any, which I doubt, for what they're doing. How better they're going to make it all when they can take out all the possible bad genes the ones that might, might make you a tyrant or might make you a criminal. And of course the definition of criminality has been broadening at one heck of a pace over the last few years. The definition of a terrorist will eventually end up in the school with anyone who simply says no to a teacher or disagrees about certain political correctness the label will be stuck on anyone who isn't sociable. They're using techniques, they have been using these techniques for years in China, the, the last great experiment. And that's why it is the little poster girl for the New World Order, because now they don't have to send the military off to pick up a woman who's pregnant with a, a second child. The neighbors 
being Pavlovian trained through massive propaganda and actually raised through schooling systems to make them so, those people who are now adults will drag off your neighbour and bring her into the abortion clinic themselves. Social approval and social disapproval, they call it, they create both. It's happening in the West with the anti-smoking ban, very similar, it's the same techniques with the same process being used, indoctrinate Pavlovian train condition response, and the public react the way they are trained to react. The UN has already declared the war on smoking as an experiment. They really care about your health as a mandate you've been sprayed like bugs from the sky, but don't smoke that cigarette. Something doesn't compute within the logical structure because there's always a good reason and then there's a real reason, and the real reason is not to be given to the public. Pavlovian training. They've already declared the next war will be the war on obesity, and you better believe they will have you compulsory going in for little bureaucrats and new departments to weigh you, measure you, in a nice eugenics set up. That's the world we're in. And you better understand and look into it as to how we got here. We got here during the so-called good times. The good times. From the 50s onwards, they threw out easy credit, especially in the United States. Have a good time. Have a ball. Entertainment. Media. Good office behind and started really jacking out all the different movies and have fun in teenager uh, movies. Everything was to be fun, fun, fun. And for 30, 40, 50 years, we've had nothing but fun, 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 but no education, no reality. And the big boys were busy during all that fun period, changing and organizing and preparing for this new, beautiful eugenicist, run society to come into existence. Charles Galton Darwin, amongst others, also wrote in his book that they would use hormonal alterations in the male and the female to make them more docile and pliable. The males would become more effeminate, the females more masculine. Look around you folks. It's in the food, it's in the inoculations. It all goes together. It's a total war. Total means total. The concept of total war. And eventually, the power of the purse, which is economic warfare, is the big stick to make everyone comply to the bitter end in this system. It's a war strategy, step by step. The collective society is supposed to emerge out of this morass with no individual qualities left, except for the elite who have already said they will not chip themselves, they will not alter themselves, because they must steer the ship, the planet Earth. They must retain their defense, their survival capabilities. But they said that the public won't need them because the state will be making all their decisions for them. Isn't that nice? We can be perpetual boys and girls with Borg speak. What a happy place. That's the bad news. Some of it. And we better get that through our skulls quickly to realize what we're really up against here. Massive planning, massive funding. They're not stupid at the top. They guide the planet. They also guide the oppositions. It's only through individual change can this be conquered. I also have to say that I'm so sick of the Patriot stations blaming the Mexicans for everything. That's the new target group, the new scapegoat. 
the Mexicans are getting funded and pushed and promoted to come into the United States because it's now time, it's on schedule. The big foundations fund them to come in. The foundations based within the United States because that was always the agenda to merge the countries. There's nothing new in it. And as always, the little people at the bottom, like the squirrel in my tree, if I go near that tree where he lives, he makes a chattering sound. And now you're seeing the people chattering, chattering, because what they've become accustomed to is changing. But the same thing happened when the, the people moved in to the Americas. The Indians then did the chattering. And this is the wave after wave, the waves of history, which are planned and manipulated. And guys like Rockefeller says, it's just a shame you you make an omelette and you can't do it without breaking eggs. So all the upheaval is mass immigration occurs with cultural clashes. To him, is the equivalent of making an omelette. These are the guys who are causing it, the guys in the big business suits, not the little, little guy from Mexico, or his wife, or his child. But it's always the little people at the bottom that fight each other because they don't know they're living in ignorance of the cause of it all. For me personally, I don't take people as groups or cultures. I take them on an individual basis. I either like or I dislike an individual. Uh, that is a law of nature. Not of the group. From myself and Hamish, it's good night. And may your God or your gods go with you.